Hi, hello, I'm Hans. I'm an intersex artist, activist, and shrimp cocktail platter. For me, as an intersex person, going to even the most routine doctor's appointment is an absolute minefield. I have so many friends who came in for a cough, had to do all of this speaking and education, and still ended up being asked about penetration. Even going in for a cold it still gives me jelly knees, but I'm here today to share my seven tips for easing the agony of routine doctor's visits, and maybe they'll help you too. Number one is a Sharpie. There are so many microaggressions in doctor's offices, and it all starts with forms. Annotations are an intersex power move. But really, what are forms that list sex asking? I'm assuming that it's about body parts and not gender. If I have to check female, that carries assumptions about what parts I do and don't have, and that information's just gonna be wrong. Even most queer and trans clinics that I've been to usually don't even have intersex as an option on their paperwork. I usually end up having to make my own paperwork. I do feel bad for the receptionists, but also viva la resistance. Number two is a speech. I know that I'm gonna get invasive questions within my first two minutes of a nurse interaction, so I might as well be prepared. Why, you ask? As a feminine-looking intersex person, I will be forced to out myself every time when I'm asked the question, and when was your last period? It's frustrating to be typecast, and it's also frustrating that nobody bothered to read my spark notes. There's no answer to this question that won't completely derail the visit by distracting from whatever reason I'm actually in for. Last period. Never. Not applicable at this time, but thank you for your interest. Um, those parts fell out. It was seven years ago on a dark and stormy night. This question is so draining because it forces me to out myself and it forces me into a very heavy education discussion. It centers being intersex regardless of what my actual reason for coming in was. If there's any nurses watching this, why do you all ask that question? Is it required? Is it some sort of political anti-abortion thing? But seriously, if you're an intersex person who's figured out how to answer this question, please share your wisdom. Anyway, you can feel a little bit less drained if you come prepared with answers to your most frustrating questions. Length of cycle. Five. Genitals. One. Any family history. Depression. Nailed it! Number three, brochures. I didn't come to be a sideshow, and I'm also not getting paid as a guest lecturer. Every intersex person is forced into education and self-defense mode in the doctor's office, but you don't always have to do it yourself. You can check in, see what you feel up to that day, and if you don't feel like fighting that battle, you can always outsource the work. A lot of med school curriculums have virtually no intersex discussion and very little LGBT discussion, and it's exhausting to have to start from zero almost every time. But that's what pamphlets are for. Number four is a playlist. Lately, my own panic playlist has been a combination of Japanese game show and guinea pig videos. Both of these things help to distract me when I'm super activated in medical settings. Number five is sensory distraction. Because the more that you're in your senses, the more that you're in your body and the less that you are out there panicking. Fidget toys and comfort objects are great. But I think of course medical settings, the strongest thing is usually the smell. For some reason they've managed to make everything smell like burnt rubber. So sensual. To improve my smellscape, I like to bring my own essential oils or just bury my head in new book smell. I'm not coming out. Number six, of course, is ice cream. You can't really bring ice cream into the doctor's office, but the point of this one is aftercare. And that means how are you going to restore yourself to your baseline emotional state after an experience? For me, that's ice cream. It's inner child work, obviously. Where you go and what you do might be different. Number seven is a friend. The point is that you're bordering a stressful experience with a hug on each side, sort of like a stress sandwich. Ugh. And those are the tips. Godspeed. If you're an intersex person, going to the doctor sucks. I wish I could make it better, and I wish I could be your doctor instead. But they don't let art school dropouts do that. So what gets you through your appointments? Do you bring things? Do you have a plan? And do you have one coming up? I would love to know in the comments, and in the meantime, press the buttons, do the thing, and I will see you soon. <laughs> I broke this pen.